Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Tech Talk. Over the past few days, I've noticed that the Arch Install project has both been increasing its development activity and the guided installer Golden Paths in a couple of my prior videos broke as a result. To maybe fix the stale info in those videos, I feel compelled to give a recent Git build of the guided installer another try and see what's changed right after this. Arch Linux's key mission is to provide maximum flexibility to install and configure a rolling installation with continuously freshened software configured just the way you want it and streamlined with nothing you don't want. The Arch way involves by necessity a lot of typing which can be error prone, particularly with entering long lists of packages needed in the initial installation. This practically begs for the concept of using installation scripts, but those tend to be static and require regular maintenance to keep up with Arch development. My interest in the guided Arch install tool is to minimize the amount of typing while gaining reproducibility of Arch Linux installations without losing too much of the flexibility you get with the Arch way. So enough of me talking. I pulled from GitHub the latest Arch ISO Arch install build artifact. So let's go boot it now. When you boot the uh, special ISO, it uh, builds the uh, latest uh, Git uh, version of Arch install, which you can see here. So let's check the uh, network configuration. Uh, IPA shows that we have a valid IP address for my private network. And we can reach the internet, that's good. And let's do an LSBLK and check for our target disk. Okay, it's dev VDA, 32 gigs. Great. So let's clear the screen and type arch install. And we're off to the races. Testing connectivity to the Arch Linux mirrors. It'll take a little bit. Hopefully this works. <laughs> there we go. Arch install language, set English 100%. Don't know what 100% means, but okay, I'll take it. Keyboard layout is US, that's good uh, for me. The mirror region, uh, let's configure that. Let's hit enter and search from the bottom. I'm in the United States, so I use the space bar to select it and hit enter again. Locale language, set. EN underscore US is good. Encoding UTF-8 is also good for my locale. Drives. Um, let's select our target disk, which is dev VDA. So that's selected. Okay, and next, a disk layout. You can select what to do with each individual drive, or we can wipe all selected drives, dev VDA, and use a best effort default partition layout. Let's select that. ButterFS for snapshots, because I won't do anything else with a rolling release. I need my snapshots and rollback capability, which we'll configure later in this video. So ButterFS it is. Yes, we want the default subvolume structure. Let's see what they choose for us. And we also want to enable ButterFS compression, um, which improves performance and disk space usage. No encryption today. Uh, because I want to boot from snapshots, I need to select uh, Grub Bootloader. So we want yes for grub bootloader as configured. Swap is true, that's ZRAM swap. Arch Linux host name, we'll change that to arch install dash one for our test VM. Root password, we'll leave the root account unconfigured, disabled for security. Instead, we'll configure a user account and make it sudo. So add a user, uh, my username is Steven, of course. Give myself a, a quick and easy password for today. Yes, it's weak, I don't care. Okay, type it twice. Uh, super user, sudo enabled, yes. We want, uh, I want to be able to become uh, root with sudo. So sudo is true. We'll confirm and exit for user account Steven. Profile, um, I like to uh, configure desktop demonstrate today. Um, any of these will work. Um, I'll select KDE Plasma because it's a popular desktop and um, it's as good as any other. 
Okay, for graphics driver, I will select all open source, which is the default. So we'll select all of those. Works great with my AMD ATI devices. Uh, audio, uh, pipe wire is fine. Um, we'll have the mainline kernel. Okay, additional packages. Um, DUF, Firefox, Git, and NeoFetch. I'll need to be able to use these for uh, the demonstration video today. All right, and for network configuration, it's not configured, so I'll use Network Manager for GNOME and KDE, which is what we chose today. We'll use Network Manager, very easy graphical network configuration. Time zone is not UTC. I am in the US Pacific time zone, so I'll select that. And automatic uh, network time protocol is true, that's good. Multilib for 32-bit library uh, compatibility. I always like to enable that. Steam uh, uses that. Uh, okay, install. Let's go straight to the installation. So it gives us a quick overview of what it will do with our disk, dev VDA. Looks good to me, so I'll hit enter to continue. So it's off to formatting and it's pulling down the packages and installing everything. I'll edit out most of this. So I won't uh, bore you guys too much. Um, but yeah, this is what it does. It just um, sets up the subvolumes and the formats and the file systems and installs the packages. Very easy. So we'll skip over uh, most of this. And uh, move straight to the uh, finish. So. Uh, it asks, would you like to root or change root into the newly created installation perform post-installation configuration? Yes or no? I'll say yes here and hit enter. So it completed without any errors, but we haven't changed rooted uh, that I can see. Oops, that's a little bug. I think it's already um, uh, reported. So uh, let's go into the... Uh, mount arch install etsy directory and check and see what it's done with arch install has done with the file system table oh looks like no compression and rel a time is not good for my ssds so i'm gonna change that to no access time and i'm gonna have to manually enable compression here so i'm gonna type compress equals um uh, equals Z standard and colon one for level one compression, which is perfect for my SSDs. Uh, your mileage may vary depending on your hardware. Okay, I'm gonna to want to do this with all, that's with the root uh, subvolume. So I want to do this with all the rest of the subvolumes. So I'm going to um, set mark here using nano with modifier A key. Then select my changed options. And then I'm going to um, copy. Then I'm going to paste the same for the snapshots subvolume. That's good. And then also do the same for the sub home subvolume. There we go. Control U pastes from copy in nano. Okay, let's do the same thing for the package subvolume, the Pac-Man package subvolume. There we go. And also for the uh, var log subvolume. That looks pretty good. All right. Much better. Again, those two little glitches have been already reported to the Arch install team as far as I remember. Okay, reboot and see what happens. All right, there's our grub menu and there's SDDM, the simple 
Display Manager. So X11, not Wayland for me because my programs, most of my programs require X11. Uh, Wayland's just not quite there yet for me. Maybe for you, but not for me. All right, there's our trusty safe landing desktop wallpaper. Um, bright and colorful. Um, so I'm going to switch to dark mode, click on files or folders, selects them. I usually set that. Supply. Ah, oh, that's easier on my eyes. Let's go to display manager or display configuration rather and select the correct uh, resolution and scaling, global scaling. Yeah, we'll keep that. And for the global scaling, we will need to uh, log out and log back in again. I changed that so that you guys hopefully can read a little easier. But before I do that, let me switch the wallpaper to kite. Oh, isn't that nice? Cool blue. So much easier on my eyes. Let's go fly kite, right? Okay, so let's log out and log back in again so that the 125% uh, scaling takes effect. And it looks like it does. All right, um, good. So moving right along, let's uh, open the console and get to work. Full screen, uh, make the font size a little bigger for you guys. All right, first things first, let's sudo pacman-syy. Make sure we're up to date, we should be, but, oh, looks like sudo is working, good. All right, always do this uh, as a habit. It's a good habit to get into. Make sure all your uh, package databases are up to date. Let's check the uh, options for mounting. So the home subvolume here, just like the other subvolumes, is uh, the no A time or no access time and compress options have taken effect. Very, very good. All right, free dash H shows we're only using just under 600 megabytes of RAM. And the ZRAM swap has been su successfully configured. You can change that to your heart's content uh, after installation. Good, so far so good. Um, uh, disk usage formatted or DUF shows all our sub volumes. So you can see how Arch install configures our target disk. Um, so the installation takes of 32 gigs takes 16.8% or 5.3 gigs as installed. So pretty slim installation, pretty decent Arch install as far as I can tell. Not bad as a base for uh, further explorations. Okay, um, so let's configure the AUR because I need uh, some packages from the AUR. So I'll install a git um, uh, AUR helper using uh, git clone https colon slash slash AUR dot archlinux.org slash paru, which is my favorite helper for AUR the Arch user repository, right? So let's cd uh, paru, and let's do the usual make package dash si package build. And uh, yes, so we just go ahead, do all the defaults and let it install. I will skip over this part as well. So you guys don't get too bored with me. Okay, Paru is installed. So let's change it to my home directory or our home directory. Clear the screen. Paru. Yep, Paru is working. Everything's up to date. So let's remove our build directory and proceed. Okay, um, let's install using Paru from the AUR and from Garuda uh, team uh, snapper dash support. So that uh, installs snapper and a bunch of utilities for booting from snapshots. So let's uh, install all those packages. Very convenient. Thank you to the Garuda team for providing this package in the AUR. Helps keep this video short. It's already trying to uh, snapshot, but since we don't have snapper configured yet, um, we've got to do that next for them to work. Uh, sudo-s, let's go to the root 
directory and configure snapper. Let's unmount uh, this dot snapshots directory. Let's remove it because snapper configuration creates this for us. So let's do that now with snapper dash c root for the root configuration, create dash config slash. So our snapper configuration for root is now done. So uh, Butterfest subvolume list uh, shows that we have an extra just created uh, dot snapshot subvolume in addition to the ats dot snapshots, which you want to keep. So let's get rid of this one. So we can do that, get rid of the extra one rather. So in order to do that, let's do a Butterfs subvolume delete slash dot snapshots. Okay, so it's done. Let's double check. Yep, the extra dot snapshot subvolume is gone. Great, nice and clean. All right, moving right along. Let's recreate the directory with make dear slash dot snapshots. And um, let's uh, do a systemctl daemon reload so that we can uh, remount all our drives or our partitions or subvolumes actually with mount a and lsblk and you can see that our new properly configured slash dot snapshots uh, directory is is now mounted on a subvolume cool we're almost done with snapper configuration we've got a couple more steps to do first off um let's do a butterfs subvol um, volume and get the default for root. As you can see, it's ID5, which is the file system tree as the top level default, but we want to be able to boot from snapshots. So we want to change that to the uh, root subvolume. So let's do that uh, by doing a butterfs subvolume list slash again. And so as you can see up here with ID256, uh, that the at, that's our at root subvolume that we want to boot from. So let's make that the default for snapper uh, boot from root works. So uh, butterfs subvol set default 256 for root. Okay, so let's get the default again. And now it should show the proper ID um, for the uh, at root subvolume as the default so that when we boot from snapshots, we boot from the proper subvolume. Cool, all right. Snapper LS, um, so yeah, we don't have any real snapshots right now. It's got a, the current snapshot uh, is the current uh, file system state. Cool, that's as expected. So let's edit our configs, our, uh, the root config for snapper because I want to be able to uh, do some basic uh, checks with as an ordinary user. So we're a sudo group, so we're on part of the wheel group that we need to allow. And generally, I like to change the limits for timeline cleanup here. I'll change the hourly to um, five and the limit daily for the timeline, uh, I'll make it uh, seven for the hourly automatic timeline snapshots and the rest for weekly, monthly, and yearly, I'll make zero. Again, you might want to change this to your liking. Okay, so uh, Snapper automatically updates its configurations as you change. So let's change the group for uh, snapshots directory to wheel. And let's get out of root here, uh, or sudo, um, and let's do a snapper ls as an ordinary user, as a Steven user here. So you can see I'm of group wheel because I'm a sudoer. So um, yeah, cool. Um, snapper is properly configured. So uh, let's do a snapper a list configs. So we can see and confirm that we've got a single config here on the system. You can add other configs. Uh, it's very flexible for other subvolumes or home or whatever you like. So uh, for root, let's do a snapper get dash config. 
As you can see, here's a nice summary of what I have configured for the system. So you probably want to change some things here for your system. All right, let's clear the terminal and um, let's become root again with sudo s. Okay, cool. Um, so let's enable some uh, services here, or timers rather, with systemctl enable dash dash now uh, grub dash uh, butterfs dot path so it monitors for new snapshots for the grub butterfs uh, service uh, for uh, snapper and let's sync it up we have to sync this up because it doesn't happen automatically with grub dash mkconfig dash o boot grub grub dot cfg there we go. It says no snapshots found because we haven't taken any snapshots yet, not even any timeline snapshots. So yeah, I would say this is successful. I don't think any error has occurred. This looks good. So uh, systemctl enable dash dash now uh, snapper dash timeline dot timer. So we have automatic snapshots every hour on the hour. And also, I think this is automatically enabled already, the cleanup, but uh, let's make sure the cleanup timer is enabled. Looks like it has already been enabled. Uh, no link, sim link required. So next, um, let's uh, snapper dash C root for the root configuration, create dash D for description, and in quotes, we'll do our first uh, base snapshot. So. I call this base system configuration with three asterisks on either end. So that's our first snapshot, because I like to create a snapshot after initial configuration of any system, in case I need to roll back, in case I screw something up, which happens very often. Let's synchronize um, just to make sure that the grub menu for booting from snapshot has taken place. Looks like it found a snapshot already, found one snapshot. Good. So far, everything is working as predicted and successfully. Let's exit. Let's do a snapper ls as the Steven user. As you can see, we've got a base system configuration snapshot, which has already taken place. OK, so let's reboot and test and see if we can boot from this snapshot that we just created. Uh, Right. Um, and there it is at the very bottom here of the grub menu, you see Arch Linux snapshots. So select that. And then here we have our single snapshot that we manually created. So let's select that. And then we select the non fallback Linux image. And we'll select that. All right. So it's booting as read only, right? But it's booting. And we can log in. There it is, we've got a bootable snapshot using snapper and grub-btrfs and uh, snap pack, which is also installed by the way for any updates you do. All right, so uh, it's marked with a hyphen, uh, the current snapshot we're booted into and it is read only. So you can do system repairs from this as you see fit, mount your your roots of volume and do your fixes. Okay, so that's working great. So let's reboot once again, and let's reboot into the read-write system using the first uh, grub menu item, the default boot. Okay, let's log in. So this is working absolutely great. As again, if you do any updates, uh, snap pack, will automatically do pre and post snapshots for you. Okay, so let's go to the Arch install GitHub site with github.com slash arch linux slash arch install. Hit enter, there we go. Um, let's put this full screen. So as you can see, uh, it's under heavy development here. Um, and here are the instructions in the readme.markup. Uh, 
lots of languages, mission statement. And we've covered this in prior videos, most, most of this stuff. It looks like they're getting to a good place, I would say. Um, if you see any issues that are not listed here in the issues section, so read this carefully for posting, uh, definitely share any issues you find, any new issues that are unknown as yet. Uh, you can report them here. Uh, I pulled the uh, this Arch ISO uh, for today's demo from, from the actions uh, section. Build Arch ISO with Arch install, commit. And I just selected the latest uh, successful build with a green check mark. So under artifacts, you'll see after you sign in, you have to sign in for this uh, to GitHub. Uh, then you can download the Arch Live ISO uh, build artifact. It's 806 megabytes in this case. And uh, yeah, so you can help test uh, out Arch install and hopefully get everything fixed up for the uh, September Arch ISO release. Help this hardworking team. They're really doing some great stuff here. Can't recommend them hardly enough. Okay, console. So let's do a NeoFetch. So as you can see, um, got a pretty decent base install of Arch Linux with KDE Plasma as a desktop. Big development efforts happening with Arch install as I publish this video. Hopefully we can look forward to a new release for the September Arch ISO and the steps here still work or work even better. If you find any undocumented issues, please send them to the team. Thanks so much for watching. Smash that like button as hard as you can and subscribe if you haven't already. Until next time, take care and have lots of fun.